the big bombshell. Obviously, we'll talk about last weekend too. Um, and you can see it in my name here, but uh, give you a little hint if you if you've been under a rock and don't know what's happening. But Live Golf and PGA Tour merged out of nowhere. Like, I mean, it's not that I don't know if we didn't see this ever happening, but it just felt like it just boom. Like I get a text message and you know, update and live and PGA tour have merged. And it's like, what in the world happened? Uh, completely changing the scene of golf with this news, just like shocking everyone. Jack, your thoughts, takeaways kind of from what just that news alone. Yeah. You kind of said it. I, I think this was, I don't want to say obviously the end goal, but I think most people knew at the end of the day, Liv probably wasn't going to succeed by itself. And the ultimate goal was probably for this to happen. And it felt like it, it was going to be, you know, a couple of years down the road. It felt like there was still a lot of tension between the two sides. And obviously we didn't hear any reports about this. So the, the timing of it was really what was the most shocking. Like no one saw it happening when it did. And it really felt like the PGA tour kind of got their hands forced because there are still so many details that we don't know that the players don't know that quite honestly, it sounds like commissioner Jay Monahan still doesn't know because there's still a lot of proceedings and things to go forward before this becomes official, but the groundwork has been laid here. Um, the, the ultimate um, picture is, is that Live Golf and PGA Tour are going to be combining once again in some way, shape, or form. What does that mean? Again, we don't know at this point. There's far more questions than answers right now. But for you know the average fan of golf, for golf fans out there everywhere, this is a, a massive win, undoubtedly, because you get big name superstars. Brooks Kepka obviously just won the PGA Championship. Probably should have won the Masters had he not had a horrid Sunday. Um, so that obviously, I think, kind of forced the issue a little bit and made the PGA Tour kind of realize, you know, oh, uh, these guys are still capable of playing at the best in, on golf's biggest stage. Phil Mickelson obviously finished in second at the Masters. Yeah. Um, so th those guys have been still quite able to hang in there despite going to uh, the Live Golf Series. Um, so I, I think that kind of started – it putting the things into motion a little bit. We had heard some reports that um, talks with live golf and, and the PGA tour and Jay Monahan had, had happened for a, a couple of weeks, but it seemed like this was going to get leaked by some news source. So they kind of had to get out in front of it and let the players know. But unfortunately, most of them still found out on Twitter. Um, it's, you know, been handled obviously horribly by the PGA tour and they look like a bunch of hypocrites. That's the downfall of this. It's a huge win for golf fans. The biggest stars are going to be coming back. You know, it's going to be even deeper fields. There's going to be bigger purses, which is great for the game. Great for the players. Great for those uh, elevated events or what they're going to call them in the future. But the cost of it was obviously Jay Monahan looking like an absolute fool. I don't, I don't see any way how he's going to carry on being the commissioner for much longer once this deal kind of gets put together. I think unless he somehow legally ties his way into it, I don't see how he's going to be the commissioner for the PGA tour moving forward. And the ones I truthfully feel bad for the most is well for number one, Rory McElroy, who really did all of the talking and all of the defending on behalf mm -hmm. of Jay Monahan and had to speak out numerous times. It obviously had weighed on him, even and his victories at the Canadian open last year when this really started and he had to talk about it there. And uh, after his win at the tour championship as well, you could tell it's just something that obviously Rory didn't enjoy having to do right. And now for all of that to be for essentially no reason whatsoever, the PGA tour is still taking on the Saudi Arabian money, even worse, the players who stood by the PGA tour and did the right thing not necessarily. I know a lot of them I'm sure didn't um, stay because they didn't want the Saudi money, but now that's the exact money that they're going to be making. Like it's just a whole bunch of uh, irony from the PGA tours perspective. And um, I'm sure there's a lot of angry and frustrated players out there. We've heard a bunch of reports. We're going to have to wait and see how this all shakes out. Again, there's a lot of details to still be finalized. It's a win for golf fans and for the game of golf, but um, yeah, just a, a foolish 
act by Jay Monahan over the last year, going on the air saying this will never happen. It's like, mm. man, all of this could have been avoided if he just had some sort of conversation with them a year ago. But no, he let his ego and his pride get in the way. And that's kind of when everything went downhill for him. So, yeah, really curious to see how this is all going to shake out. But, yeah, what a, what a shakeup in the golf world, Joey. I, I literally tweeted out things that no one could have saw coming for 500 Alex, because the timing of it, it was just like, yeah. no one had any sniff of this whatsoever. Even Rory tiger Woods supposedly like this was done in closed doors and was kept quiet for a, a few weeks. And man, what a, what a crazy news drop prior to the Canadian open.